Hello again, folks. Last week, the Solomon Islands government initialed a big bilateral security agreement with China. Barring any last minute change of heart, it will be signed. It will go ahead. This is no ordinary agreement because once signed, it'll have major ramifications for security in the South Pacific. China will legally be allowed to increase its military footprint in our backyard. Now, the islands are just 1,700 kilometres off the coast of Townsville, where the Lavrak Barracks and the RAAF base are home to about 15,000 of our soldiers. Under the terms of the draft agreement, China could send police, military personnel and other armed forces to the islands to, quote, assist in maintaining social order and for a variety of other reasons. China can also send its warships to the islands for stopovers and to replenish supplies. Prime Minister Sogavari says he won't allow a Chinese naval base to be built, but does anyone believe him? All you need to do is follow the money trail here, and therein lies the answer. The Sogavari government is reportedly on the CCP's payroll. It switched diplomatic recognition from Taiwan to China in 2019, and then just last year, Honiara exploded as violence and riots engulfed the capital. Hundreds of Australian police were dispatched to restore order and its parliament called a motion of no confidence in Sogavare. But China intervened. It reportedly offered about $30,000 US to every MP who voted against that motion. So the vote failed. Sogavare is still in power. China got its security deal. Defence Minister Peter Dutton told me that all you have to do is look at the South China Sea to understand where Xi Jinping is going with this. I think we need to be very cautious here because the Chinese are incredibly aggressive. Uh, the tactics that they're deploying into small island nations are quite remarkable. Mm. And Australia has done more and more each year. Uh, but China is certainly on a pathway here. It poses a threat to all countries within our region and that's mm. why Many of uh, the neighbours and, and, uh, and dear friends of uh, the Solomon Islands have said that, you know, this is not the right decision. It's not just Australia or New Zealand that has concerns about this. The leader of neighbouring Micronesia invoked the bloody battles of World War II and warned the pact could see the region become a battleground for much larger powers. In the Solomon Islands campaign, the Japanese occupied many parts of the region with naval and air bases to protect its forces and supply lines. Ultimately, 100,000 people were killed, 100 ships were sunk, and more than 2,000 aircraft were lost. Why is this example being used? Because if you draw a straight line between Queensland and Hawaii and then onto California, you go through the Solomon Islands. These islands are critical to control and protect sea lines of communication between Australia and the US, and China knows this. So if its ships were there, maritime routes between Australia and American ports, which are primarily used for trade and naval forces, would be disrupted. We know how well China plays the long game. It's had this in mind for years, and Australia has been asleep at the wheel. But what can it do? Australia has the Pacific Step Up program and kicks in millions of dollars every year in aid. But China has more cash and is willing to bribe. So has this diminished Australia's own sphere of influence in the South Pacific? Well, I'd be careful about using the term sphere of influence because it tends to be a, a sort of term that people like Vladimir Putin, you know, and the Chinese Communist Party use. And so I don't think we should describe our relationship with the South Pacific nations in that term, that those terms, you know, the Prime Minister has, you know, been very emphatic in referring to our South Pacific family, and I think that's a better way of, right. of viewing it. So we, we should be, you know, talking to the family and saying, you know, what's the best way we can help you? What do you want from this relationship and how can we provide that? Solomon Islands is poor. 85% of its population lives below the poverty line. But it's also run by crooked leaders who are only out to protect themselves. There is an election next year, so perhaps the deal will only last as long as Sogavari is in power, but only if he loses. Thanks for watching and to support this channel, please like, share and subscribe below. I'll see you next time.